three still. Can you check zero? No. no. Why? Because it's on. Yeah, it wouldn't tell you anything about these two intervals if you check zero. It'd say, oh, yeah, well, zero in this case is going to work because you have it less than or equal to zero. It's going to work. But it doesn't tell you whether this interval works or whether this interval works. So sometimes, if you have that zero, you need to pick some different points. What point are you going to pick over here, do you think? One. Over here? Negative one. And here? Two. One. Anything you want. I'd probably pick one. I'd probably pick one because it's easier for me. And then over here, what are you going to pick? Seven. Yeah, seven. Why don't you try those points for me, see if they work, okay? Oh my goodness, okay, so I've plugged in each of these numbers into my original inequality, hopefully you did this. This one says positive 1 plus 6, that's going to give you 7. Did you get 7? Mm -hmm. Checking the points is the most important part of this, it really is. It's being careful on those signs and checking your points. I, I know it's basic, it's basic pre-algebra, I mean, this is what you learn in integer, interval, integers in chapter 2 of pre-algebra. You learn how to do this stuff, okay, but it, it's, it's important. You're going to get positive 7 less than or equal to 0. Is that true or false? False. Definitely a false statement. That means the first interval where I checked negative 1, so I checked negative 1, that's in this interval, it was false. That's not. That's definitely not true. So that's false, so I put a false for that interval. Do you still follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, next interval, we're going to plug in 1. 1 says 1 squared, that's 1, minus 6, that's negative 5 is less than or equal to zero. Is negative five less than or equal to zero? Yes. Absolutely, it's less than zero. That, that makes it true. So I checked one, it was true. I'm gonna put true for that whole interval. You only need to check one point, not a whole bunch of them, just one point. Next I'll check seven, what should seven be? Should it be false or true? False. It should be false. Why? Because look at it, false, true, what should that one be? It should be false. It better be. If, it, if you got a true, you knew you messed one of these up. Something happened there. It has to alternate with quadratics. So we're going to get 49 minus 42. That's going to give you 7 again. Notice still we have that relationship. They're the same exact number. If you pick one unit away in each, each case, it's symmetrical. It's going to give you that relationship. That's definitely false. We get a false for the interval. Raise your hand if you made it that far and got those same statements. Good. That's the most important part. If you can get that, you got this down. Next thing, we're going to write the intervals that work. Oh, hey, how many intervals work? One. One. One, two, three, 20? I don't know. How many? One. How many of you marked as true? One. One. Then one works. So you only have one interval. Where does that interval start? Zero. Where does that interval end? Am I going to use brackets or parentheses? Brackets. Oh, good. Why? Because it's um, less than equal to you look back up there, the interval notation has to come back for you. That says equal to, equal to meant you have some brackets. Raise your hand if you're okay with that one. Good. Try that one on your own, it'll give you two minutes to do that.
So it's still quadratic because we still have that x squared. That means you still need it in standard form. All standard form means for you is you're getting everything to one side and zero on the other side. So you're checking for that. If it wasn't in standard form, you'd be adding or subtracting to, get, to move parts over, to make sure you have zero on one side. This is, of course, in standard form, that's great. You temporarily set it equal to zero. What that's allowing you to do is to find those breaks for those intervals. That's it. After that, you put those, those numbers that you just found on the number line, and you check however many intervals you have by checking one point in the original inequality, and then write out those true intervals in interval notation. That's the, the whole idea. Hey, what factors out of x squared minus 8x? What'd you do there? X. That's even easier than a diamond problem, right? Because we just have that single x. So don't forget that you can do that. You get x minus 8. Well, that means you got two points here. You got x equals 0. You got x minus 8 equals 0. Don't forget about that x. And you got x equals 8 and x equals 0. So on our number line, 0 comes first, 8 comes second. We're going to have three intervals to check. Of course, we can't check 0, but you can check negative 1, 1, and 9. Those would probably be the numbers that you check too, yeah? Those are the easiest ones to check in this case. If you check negative 1, you get negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1 less than 0. That all gives you 9. True or false? Definitely a false statement. 9 is not less than 0. Hey, what should that be? True. What should that be? False. It should alternate. Now, if it doesn't, listen, if it doesn't, that means you did something wrong. You made a mistake on checking your points. So these, these do need to alternate for you for quadratics. So up here we're going to go, okay, well, let's see. We're going to check 1. 1 squared minus 8 times 1 less than zero, that's going to give you negative seven. And that's true statement. Next one, if we check nine, again, you're going to get nine squared minus eight times nine, less than zero. That's going to give you nine. So basically, you're triple checking your work here. That's what this does. But trust me, it's good for you to triple check your work. Because a, lo a lot of us have problems with just plugging those numbers in, especially when you have those negatives flying around. It's hard, right? So we want to make sure that we're triple checking your work. It has to go false, true, false, or true, false, true, four quadratics. It's got to do that. How many people feel okay with this? Got that far? Good. How many intervals work? One. One interval. That's going to go from zero to eight. Don't ignore this part. You have to do interval notation here. Zero to eight. Why parentheses? Very good. We look back at our original inequality. We check whether that has the equals or not. If it does, brackets. If it doesn't, parentheses, then you're done. Let's try one more type of example here before we move on into some rational inequalities. I probably think, Leonard, come on. We're having so much fun here. This is easy. Why are you going to throw something like that up there? Well, well naturally, th this, <laughs> this isn't a quadratic. It's not a quadratic anymore. So we're, we're out of the realm of quadratics. Why is this not a quadratic? There's three Well, imagine for a second. Yeah, there's three solutions. That's great. You're going to have three. Imagine for a second if you distributed it. Do you see how the largest power is going to be a power of three? You get an x to the third power there. That's a cubic. So we're now in cubics. However, I haven't taught you how to factor cubics. So they're all going to look like this. And this is a nice thing. You might not realize this is a nice thing for you. But I want you to think about it. Firstly, is everything to one side and zero on the other side? Mm -hmm. So technically, we'll call that standard form. It's not really standard form because it's not distributed, but trust me, listen, do not distribute this. Please don't. Watch what happens if you don't distribute this. Just write this with that equal sign we were just talking about. Just write that with the equal sign. Temporarily write it as an equal sign. Hey, check it out. Look at the word. Doesn't that look a whole lot like that? Mm -hmm. 
So basically, the work's been done for you. Is that not awesome? <laughs> Booyah! I don't have to factor, I don't have to do anything. Hey, look it. Something times something times something equals zero. Zero product property still works. So what you do is you go, oh, okay. Well, if something times something times something equals zero, I know that the first expression has to equal zero, and the second expression has to equal zero, and the third expression has to equal zero. That's got to be the case. So just like we did before, you're going to set each of those parts equal zero, only here you have one extra part. You just have three parts there. So x is 2, x is negative 1, x is negative 5. Give me a little head nod if you're still okay with that. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you still put those on a number line? Mm -hmm. Negative 5, good. Negative then? Five. And? Two. How many intervals do we have here? Four. Yeah, if you, if you cut a, a loaf of bread in three slices, you get four pieces, right? That's what you just done. One, two, three slices, you get one, two, three, four pieces. You get one more piece of bread for however many slices you, you make. You with me? Okay, so here, how many points are we going to have to check? Four points. Hopefully, you're to the point where you know what points we're going to check up here. You're going to check negative six, and you're probably going to check negative two. Here you can check 0, and here you can check 3. You with me? Now, gen this doesn't always have to happen this way, but generally, you will still alternate. Generally. You'll go true, false, true, false, or false, true, false, true. There are rare occasions with, with some of this stuff where you can, you can go true, false, false, true, or false, true, true, false, or true, true, false, false. False, false, true, true. You can do that when you get into like calculus level stuff when you're when you're doing this. It's called a sign analysis test uh, on occasion when you're dealing with this. Uh, so please stick with it. It should alternate, but it doesn't have to all the time. Stick with it and check every single interval. Are you with me on that? Go ahead and check those now for me, okay? You know, I'll show you how to do the first one. Have you do the rest of them? I want you to see a certain way. Um, if you're checking these, don't distribute it all. All you got to do is make sure that you're for negative five, or sorry, negative six. You're plugging it into each one. So negative six minus two, negative six plus one, negative six plus five, and you're checking to see if that's less than or equal to zero. Essentially, I want you to see this. What it comes down to is simply multiplying signs because you're multiplying something, right? This is negative eight times negative 5 times negative 1. You with me on that? Hey, is our answer going to be positive or negative here? Negative. negative. Now, it really doesn't matter what it is. You know the answer is going to be negative. You with me? Mm -hmm. Any negative is going to be less than 0. So we know that this is going to be a true statement right here. We know that for a fact. Now, you can work it out. You're going to get negative 40. Is negative 40 less than or equal to 0? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. 